I go to a conference of neuroscientists and I say, do you expect to eliminate addiction in the next 20 years, the next 40 years, the next 50 years? And they may not say anything. I say, let me rephrase the question. Do you expect addiction to decrease, remain the same, or increase in the next 20, 40, 50 years? 90% of them will say it's going to increase. And what they're really recognizing is that addiction is something much broader than a biological or a neurological response in the brain. In fact, what this entire much heralded approach to addiction, which is associated with Nora Volko, who's a tremendous success as a public relations hound, that's her greatest triumph, not in the field of science, is in locating addiction in the brain, in the neurosystem, neurochemical system around dopamine, because really every single activity that a human being conducts has some reflection in the brain, has some neurochemical consequence. So at best, Volko and her colleagues have managed to point out that cocaine and other possible powerful substances impact the brain. That tells us zero. It tells us zero. It doesn't tell us who will become addicted and who won't become addicted. All they can measure is the impact of the drug in the brain. The most important thing it can't tell us is who, once addicted, will cease to be addicted. We've got all these powerful models of addiction located in neurochemistry. For example, the nicotine replacement model of addiction, the nicotine maintenance model of addiction, which explains carefully that no human being can overcome nicotine addiction and then is dazzled by the fact that about 50% of addicted smokers overcome addiction. They can't, we have a whole science that can't deal with the most fundamental and most interesting aspect of the phenomenon. And if you ask most people, as I often do, why you gave up smoking, I'll go to a conference and I'll say, what's the hardest addiction to quit? Drug addiction. Recovering people always scream out, smoking and nicotine. Then I'll say, oh, has anybody here quit a nicotine addiction? And 60% of the room raises their hand. I say, well, how many of you have had some kind of therapy to do that? Nicotine replacement therapy or group therapy? And five people out of 500 will raise their hand. I'll say, wow, you're a very radical bunch. How did that happen? And of course, what happens is somehow that addictive habit butts up against some critical self-concept or life issue, and the addiction has to be rejected. Most often, the single most curative aspect for addiction is parenthood. It causes more people to go up every kind of addiction, drinking, heroin, smoking, than everything else combined. And we have a science that's incapable, not only of explaining that, it has no parameters for dealing with that, it can't even recognize that. That's to deny the most fundamental aspect of the science. So neuroscience is the most uh, ballyhooed, most inflated view of addiction. Its own practitioners don't believe it'll solve anything. It can't even understand the phenomenon under examination. It doesn't even offer us a language for dealing with addiction.